guys. Welcome to another episode of Instant Impact. I am so excited about the guest I have for you today. Uh, this woman is someone who I absolutely adore. She's one of my personal coaching clients at Brand Builders Group, and I've just gotten to know her over the past year. And she has such an incredible personal story, and she is a systems and scaling pro. And I know so many of you are at a point where you're ready to scale your business, whether you are you know, kind of teetering around your first six figures and it's like, this is exciting and now I'm ready to scale or you want to go to the next level um, in some other way. Today's episode is for you. And so my guest who I'm going to introduce you to uh, just momentarily here is Jill Flodstrom. And Jill is a seven figure entrepreneur. She's launched five new businesses in three different industries. And she is an absolute master at systems, scale, and efficiency. And part of what I think is really interesting and just um, adds to her credibility as well as her own personal story of what she went through that made her so passionate about this. So she'll share more about this in the interview, but Jill years ago had a car accident that forced her to combine, to basically take an eight to 10 hour day and squeeze it into one hour. She was only really energy wise and cognitive wise able to work one hour a day. And you can imagine, I mean, think about right now in your business, if you went from having a full day's work to only having one hour a day to work, what the heck would you do? But she did it and she continued to grow. And there are so many lessons from her having to figure out how to prioritize and systematize and take everything she did and squeeze it into that one hour that she's going to share with you that you can apply to your own business. And so this episode is all about how do we get way bigger results in less time by having the right systems team. She's going to talk about how she hires, how she brings on team members, how she organizes and manages her day. For those of you who love like organization tips, you are going to absolutely geek out on this episode. I did. I learned some really cool new ideas from Jill as well. And um, again, it's just, I'm all about how do we make a greater impact in less time with our businesses? And Jill is able, she's going to do that today for you in the episode. So um, I can't wait for you to learn from Jill, to get to meet Jill, definitely connect with her on social media afterwards, start following her, get to know her. She's just, not only is she a brilliant businesswoman, she also has a huge heart and she's fun. So you're going to love, love, love getting to meet her. So Jill, thank you so much for what you shared in today's episode. And guys, I am so excited to go ahead and introduce you to Jill Flodstrom. Jill, it is so good to have you on the podcast today. I have just loved working with you this year and seeing what you've created. And you are such a master at systems and scale. You're probably the most organized person I know. I mean, for anyone who's watching the video on this, they're going to see this amazing, I've already forgot what you call the board, but I know it's <laughs> it looks really good and you're super organized. <laughs> so people need to watch the video. What is it called? A com combine? It's a Kanban board. Kanban board. Yeah. It's okay. a Japanese technique. Thank you so much. I, I it's just, it's awesome. I love it. <laughs> well, you're awesome. And I'm just, I'm excited because you have so much wisdom to share for entrepreneurs who are looking to scale their business. And um, I know every time you go to one of our brand builders events, people are like, flocking to you to find out your organization <laughs> secrets, your tips, um, how you've scaled. You've done, like I said in the intro, like you're a seven figure entrepreneur, you've built and scaled so many businesses. So I know you have a wealth of wisdom to share. And I think to me, it's always important to start with why, right? It's like, why is this something you care about? Why is this something you're personally passionate about? Anybody can talk about scaling and organization and systems, but I know for you, you have a strong backstory as to why this is something that you're passionate about. So can you tell us, like, start off by telling us about why scale and systems are something that you're so personally passionate about? I love systems. I think that they they just make things so much easier. But to start off with kind of what happened and what led to where I'm at now is I got in a car accident in a very busy time of year and it wasn't a big car accident at all. It was just a little tiny fender bender. But in the days after that, it, I was diagnosed with a concussion. It made, it turned into something 
very, very long term and completely changed my life. And I think that you hear a lot of stories about people that there was this one thing that changed their life. And I had that one thing. And so what happened is the my brain essentially only had a short period of time that it could work every day. And I was your typical hustle type entrepreneur that could work day in, day out, all hours of the day. You know, nobody was going to outwork me. And then when you have limited brain power, all of a sudden, and you're like, okay, we clearly have to do something because we're not going to be able to get as much done as we normally do. And that led to delegation and systems. And I think what's the most interesting part about delegation is the fact that you don't think anybody can do it as good as you do. You know, this is your little baby. Nobody's going to be able to, you know, love it and take care of it and create it as much as you can. But it turns out that people so can do so much more than you thought they could. And that's the magic of it is you're like, wow, I didn't know that somebody could care about my little baby more than I do and love on it and take it to the next level. And I think delegation is just so important. And systems too, you know, you have to create systems when you start delegating to people because you're sharing so many things and being able to communicate with them about, this is what I want the end of it to look like. I don't really care how we get there. You know, everybody has different ways of doing things, but making sure that the end result is kind of that vision, but also for them to take it to the next level. And you're like, wow, I didn't even know that what I thought of could look that good because Rachel made it that way. I mean, it's just, it's been an incredible journey for sure. Yeah. Well, and I think what you're saying is so important because most of us, we kind of, we set up our business assuming that things will always stay the same in terms of how much time we have, in terms of you know, even like how much money and resources we have. And it's like, we kind of go about our daily business and don't think about, well, what would happen if something dramatically changed? And it could be something like you had like a car accident. It could be for, you know, female business owners, like they get pregnant and suddenly they don't have as much time or maybe a family's adopting and they have to change things up or any number of things happens where suddenly you don't have time that you maybe took as a luxury before and you, it's like our tasks will always expand to fill the amount of time we have for them. Right. I think that is that Pareto's principle, I think is what it's something like that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, So for you, when that happened for you, kind of take us back to what happened after the car accident, how many hours a day did you actually have to work where you were functioning? Yeah, it was Mm -hmm. only an hour or two. And you know me, I when I first met with the doctors, I was like, it's okay. Like, you know, a normal person's energy is, you know, between one and ten, and I'm always at a fifteen. Like, I'll I can get past this, I can work through it. And they're like, actually, you can't. And so I was like, let's test this. And unfortunately, I tested it and it did not end well. So I was like, okay, the reality is here. Like, we only literally have about an hour and a half, and then it's just like you need to go to bed. Like your brain is just like tapped we're done so that's that's how it started so okay so this is because i think we can learn so much from you because you had to take something that i'm assuming filled probably you were already working probably 10 hour days oh my gosh yeah how the heck did you figure out how to squeeze everything and and you probably weren't squeezing everything in right (laughs) that was part of your secret but when you suddenly realized i have one hour a day to continue to manage my business what did you prioritize? How did you figure out, kind of take us through the steps? Because I think if someone is listening and they can start thinking about how to get exponentially more out of every hour of the time that they're working, this is going to apply to them, even if they still have a full eight, 10 hours a day. So how did you figure out what to do in that one hour? So I think the very, you know, the first couple of days, I realized that, you know, this was not going to work anymore, that we had to do something completely different, but it started out with just making a list of literally everything that I used to do. And even down to like, you know, two, three minute tasks and making those lists of like, okay, then categorizing those lists to say, okay, well, this kind of falls under, you know, social media, this falls under emails, this falls under, you know, editing, things like that. And so creating those lists made a huge difference because then it kind of led me to say, okay, well, this kind of fits into one position that we could fill, another position that we could fill, and then yet a third position that we could fill, you know, and you know, deciding, okay, is there enough work to bring on someone either part-time or full-time, depending on how much stuff it was? Because 
I think the most important thing too, when you start listing things out is you realize some of those tasks you are not the most efficient at. There are people, I mean, I will tell you that ideal can sort through my inbox like a wizard. I'm like, I have no idea how you can categorize that so quickly when that was a task that used to take me, you know, hours, because you know how it is. You get so many emails and some of them are amazing and you want to get right back. And some of them are just things that you're like, you know, that could wait or even better, you know, just delete and get rid of. So that's kind of how it started was just making that list. And I think that that's something that we forget um, as entrepreneurs to do because we're so busy. We're so go, 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 go. Yes. Okay. So that makes a lot of sense. So you kind of took everything you had, you categorized it into different buckets, almost like different yep. roles. And I know for you, like in your coaching program, a lot of the entrepreneurs you're working with, they're in a similar position to what it sounds like you were in before the accident where you were doing all the roles. Absolutely. So I think this is really useful because I want to talk with you about for somebody who, let's say they're an entrepreneur and they've like, they've already achieved a certain level of success. Like financially, they're probably maybe hovering around six figures. Maybe they're a little lower, mm -hmm. a little higher, but it's like, they're kind of hovering there, but they've done it really all themselves. And they're looking at their life. They're looking at their days and they're realizing there is no way that I'm going to be able to scale and get to multiple six figures or seven figures if I keep doing all these things on my own. Walk us through what are the steps that someone should be taking. You don't have to give it all because I know that's part of what people pay you for, but like walk us through what are some of the first initial things we should be thinking about doing in order to start scaling and growing and expanding um, our team who's helping us so we can reach that next level. Well, I think it's really important that when you're listing out those tasks that someone else can do, it's also the personality that you're looking that you're looking to fill. You know, that person is out there. It's just a matter of finding them. So what are their personality traits that we're looking for? Like ideal, you know, her role for me is very much email, social media posting. She has a wealth of knowledge in so many other things. And this is like a tip that I didn't even think about until after we had everyone hired. And obviously we didn't hire everybody all at once. It was something that, you know, we grew and as more and more tasks came about, we're like, we can shift those over. But the main thing to remember when you are looking for someone is that you want to ask them, what are they good at? Because we look for people who are like, you know what, you are awesome at email organization, but what do you love to do? Because it kind of fell into my lap that ideal love social media. I mean, she was originally hired just to manage all my email inboxes because it was just overwhelming me. And then as that conversation grew and I was like, Hey, listen, like what else do you love? She started to talk about social media and I thought this is a perfect fit. She can help me with LinkedIn. She can help me with Instagram, all these different things that just kind of evolved. Same thing with Rachel. I mean, she was hired just to be my video editor. And then I found out later that she was a podcast editor. And I was like, how did I not know this before? But it's just a matter of talking with people and saying, Hey, what do you love to do? What else can you do that? Maybe, you know, you just didn't realize that they were available or like to do. Hmm. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. And I'm thinking about even in my own hiring process, I don't know that I've ever asked that. And mm -hmm. I don't know that I've asked that of my own current team members. So it seems like at, both at the beginning and then after somebody starts working with you, be having conversations, like talk to your team. I think that's another thing where people sometimes make a mistake is they're, they kind of do like a set it and forget it with their team where they're like, Absolutely. I'm hiring this person for it. And then they're just going to do it. And you don't stay in communication and that obviously can go downhill fast. Absolutely. Um, but that's a really, okay. So that's a really good tip. So find out what does the person like to do? It sounds like look for kind of hidden opportunities where they can help. Any advice, if somebody hasn't hired yet. Um, and they're, it's like, okay, I need to make my first hire. How do they figure out what to, what to hire first, what to delegate first? I think when you're looking at your list and you've categorized it and you see the largest chunk of things, if it's like, for example, it was me with email. I mean, it was just like, oh my gosh. I mean, I was that person with the cell phone where people would be like, you have like 40,000 unread emails. What's up with oh, that? I was like, okay. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Okay. <laughs> That makes me feel so uncomfortable. <laughs> I know, right? It totally made other people uncomfortable, but I was just so used to it. I was like, it's fine. Don't worry about it. But that was one of the things that, that was a major pain point to me. And maybe that's something to think about is like, what 
hurts the worst. For me, it was email because every time I looked at my phone, I was like, oh, dang, there's all those emails. I got, you know, and it was just something that was constant. But once I removed that from my plate, I realized how big of like a mental strain that was looking at that day in and day out. So I think when you look at your list, say, oh, what is the thing that like just makes me hurt? And like, is just like, oh, if I could get rid of that, my life would be so much different. Yeah. That is definitely the thing. And for me, email for sure. Yeah. You know, I love that you said that because I used to think about this just from a logical perspective of, you know, what can I afford, quote unquote, afford to do, which sure. is never really the way to hire. Right. Um, but I started doing this recently where it was like, where am I being a bottleneck? Because there's a task I just keep putting off. Yes. And I noticed in my own business, it was copywriting. And it was like, it didn't matter how many people I had get my content ready, get things put together. I was still in charge of writing the copy that was going to go with the social media post. And I would put it off, put it off, put it off, put it off. And finally it was like, why am I pretending like someday this is going to be something that I right. like to do and I want to do when I could just hire somebody else to do it? And it's so freeing. The moment you let it go, it's just... You don't realize how much of a weight it was. Yeah. You're like, oh, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> I mean, you get, you just, you have this energy suddenly to focus on the other stuff you like. So I, I like using kind of that like emotional pain point test um, mm -hmm. to help figure out. So one of the things that I love about you is you are like, you're so good at systems and structure and helping people think about things really logically. And I know you have a system that you've created called clear that helps people who are maybe stuck in like overwhelm and struggling with what the heck do I do next? If, if your business has kind of grown to the point where your desk is crazy and it's like your inbox is hopefully not at that 40,000, but maybe it's at 40,000. <laughs> like, and this system is so good. So I would love if you would share with us about what the system is and how we can implement it. Well, I think it's when you're in overwhelm and things are happening and you know, you're looking, you're reaching out to find out, Hey, what's a better way to do this? I know I need to do something different, but I don't know what to do or where to go. This is the system that I use to help me like sort through everything when literally I had one hour a day to crank out 12 hours worth of work. This is what I use. So clear is collect, list, evaluate, act, and review. So that is the steps that I used. And it's just a matter of making a list, categorizing that list, deciding what you can delegate, what you have to do yourself. Like you had mentioned, you know, that, you know, writing the copy was something that you were just like, I'm gonna get to it. And then later you were like, nope, not gonna happen. Yep. So acting, which I think is the most important part because some of us are awesome at like writing stuff down in our planners and planning it all out, putting it on our Kanban board, but then actually doing it and saying, okay, I'm going to carve out these next 15 minutes and I'm going to bust out this task. I'm just going to be done. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just going to get it done and then we can tweak it from there. And I think that's a powerful thing because when you start actually getting stuff accomplished that's been on your to-do list, it is the most gratifying feeling when you're like, I can totally do this. I might be super crazy with like 1500 tasks, but just this one, I'm going to get done. Yeah. And it's just kind of a snowball. I really, okay. I love that. It's just like action, just getting it done. Cause I think mm -hmm. we get caught up in the emotion of, of saying it, like we can avoid it. And, um, I mean, I'm someone who I, I try to live by my calendar instead of yep. a list, but I'll keep things on my calendar so I can see that I did them. <laughs> I'm like the person who like does the to-do list and then, you know, checks it off, but still keeps it on there so you can see it's accomplished. Like, because it, it really You does. need that though. Yeah. You need that yeah. Because it's that positive, like, look at how much I've accomplished. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And that positive momentum is so powerful. Mm -hmm. So one of the other things I wanted to ask you about is because I just feel like people love organization tips and I know you have so many of them. And mm -hmm. so I want to try to get a couple of those from okay. you, but I want to start with this Kanban board because I had never heard of one before you. And it, it's like I said, in the video, it's behind you. It looks really cool. So guys, if you're listening on the audio version of the podcast, go check out on my website, on the podcast page, I'll have a video interview with Jill. You can also find it on YouTube, but you want to see how this looks. Cause I'm like, where can I get one on Amazon right now? So tell us about what the purpose is of this and how it works. Um, and then we'll probably talk a little more organization, but let's start with this. 
Yeah, absolutely. So I think that when we have these big projects, the big project is so overwhelming. So by breaking the project down and making sure that these are just two minute tasks. So what you'll see at the very top up here um, is the heading. So that's what the, like the overall project is. And then each one behind me is just like each pro individual project, but below that is broken down by two minute tasks or less. So I know that if I have just two minutes, I can pull a sticky note off and move it to this middle section here, which is, I don't know if you can see that yellow one. So that's something that I'm working on right now. And then after that, I move it to the done section. And it is so gratifying at the end. So I plan in 90 day sections. So at the end of 90 days, when you look at these bottom sections and they are full and these top ones are empty, you're just like, I'm a rock star. I got ah. this. <laughs> That's so good. And it's so simple. Yeah, and absolutely. So the two minutes is interesting. That's an interesting way to think about organizing your tasks for a project. So do you try mm -hmm. to break everything down into two minute chunks? I do, possible? especially, yep. Especially when it's a project, because I know I might not have two hours or 30 minutes, mm -hmm. but I have two minutes in between client calls or something that I can just go grab a post-it note off the board, pull it down and be like, okay, I got this. So that's how I break everything up just because it's less overwhelming for me when I know, oh, totally, I can find two minutes. You know, and that's something that when I meet with my clients too, they're like, well, how long is it going to take? And I'm like, well, just a couple minutes. Do you have a couple minutes? You know, somebody has, you know, two minutes to squeeze in, even if they're super, super crazy busy, two minutes, not a big deal. Totally. I mean, we're all wasting probably 10 to... 50 two minute chunks a day, just like scrolling Instagram yeah, and totally. out or doing whatever. Like mm -hmm. that's, that's a really interesting system. I've actually never heard of that. So I like that because it seems, it just seems manageable, right. um, totally which I think doable. people are looking for. Yeah. Any other like best practices or tips that you offer to your clients in terms of organization, um, systems, anything that you would recommend to someone who's, you know, they're at, like, like I said, like they're really ready to start scaling and growing their small business, any other organization tips for someone yeah. at that phase? The one thing that I do that has made a huge difference is making my to-do list at night before I leave the office. And mm -hmm. it's something, these things are so simple and you're like, listen, it cannot be that easy. And I'm like, it absolutely is. Two minute task and making your to-do list before you leave your office, before you leave your desk at night, whatever, wherever your space is, tidying that space up and making that to-do list is huge because you're going to get distracted on your drive home. You're going to get distracted when you get home. There's so many things that are happening that you're going to get to the office the next day and be like, what was that one thing I was supposed to do? Mm -hmm. And if you forget, you're potentially letting someone else down. And so by doing it the night before when it's fresh in your mind, as soon as you open up your planner, you're like, I got this. I can start chugging these things out. If it's a big, bigger task and I need to break it down because I know today's going to be a, a crazy day, I can do that as well. And one thing that you mentioned, which I think is so important, is your schedule, is building in time to your schedule for that schedule blocking to say, okay, I need a 15-minute chunk because I need to work on my social media images or whatever your task might be, is to build that into your day. So that way, at the end of the day, you're not frazzled and you're like, I literally got nothing done. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Well, what I love about all of this is to me, whenever I'm interviewing someone and talking to an expert on something, I always look to see what results have they gotten in their own life. And so to hear this from you, someone who is a seven figure entrepreneur, who's built and scaled multiple businesses, the proof is in the pudding, right? And so to me, it's just, I, whenever I'm learning from an expert, I always like to try to be really coachable and I would encourage um, for, for you who's listening, like think about it this way too. just be coachable and be like, Hey, if this is what Jill is saying works, even if it's something I haven't tried before, even if it's something I haven't done before, Hey, if I'm not currently a seven figure entrepreneur and I want to be there, <laughs> let me start implementing this and learn from Jill because clearly she's proven it works, right? Like you've done the thing in your right. own business. So, um, this is just, it's so helpful. Every time I talk to you, I feel like, motivated, like, yes, I can go do it. You're such a master of efficiency. You're such a master just getting stuff done. And you have such a great positive attitude through all of it too. So um, you're just such a light in the world. And I know people Thank are going to want to go connect with you and find out more about um, how they can work with you. I know you've got, this is something you really haven't offered private coaching a lot in the right. past, but I know 
you're starting to, you're available for a handful of clients in a private coaching capacity now as well. So I want you to talk about that. I want people to find out how they can work with you. Um, so tell people a little bit about that and then where they can go to find out more and connect with you from here. Yeah, absolutely. So I am so excited to be offering coaching. You can definitely go to my website, which is jillianfloodstrom.com. Now I know that that Scandinavian last name is a lot. So definitely go to hi Jillian and that will take you right to the page where you can check out everything that I'm offering. I would love to help coach you in your business and making sure that you are the most efficient with your time. Uh. Amazing. Thank you so much for your generosity, for what you taught everyone and me today in the podcast. I just adore you and I so appreciate everything that you shared. So thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it.